Hey YouTube, I'm Alvin, and welcome to week three of my Mass Effect 2 Let's Play. And uh, you guys introduce yourself. I'm etc. And I'm the Spectre. Okay, and we're going back in. So last Is week, we recruited Garrus. Shepherd. What? Are you also Shepard? Oh, I guess no, I am sorry. Shepherd. That's, uh, that's my Twitter persona. It actually has nothing to do with Mass Effect at all. It's It was just a coincidence. It's my... Yeah. It's my nickname. It, it's just a coincidence. Darn yep. I could have been making puns all week with that. <laughs> well, I'll give you I'll give That's you a hint. Away from me? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with my last name. Anyways, so last week we got Garrus and Morden. And um we're off Omega, so do we want to go back to Omega and do some side quests or we just want to We can go to the Citadel and talk to them. What do you guys think we should do? Well, what dossiers do we have right now? We have Jack, and we have Grunt. Let's go to the Citadel. Okay. Let's see. Can unless you want to, unless you want to pad everything out, we should probably just go to the Citadel. There's, uh, we can, we'll go back to Omega later, so we can do stuff then. I mean, Let's if you want to grind some like Renegade points or whatever. Nah. I, I was actually kind of annoyed when I did Mass Effect One though, because uh, I didn't get to make Saren kill himself, and that made me very sad. Wait, what? In, in Mass Effect 1, you can talk Saren down to where he kills himself. Commander, yeah. And I didn't get to do that. Why not? Because I didn't have enough ragged points. <laughs> you said you didn't put enough points into the skill? Yeah, partially. Okay, we're going to the Weird. Citadel. This isn't going to take very long, because there's not actually much to do here. We may spend the entire first episode here, depending on how long it is. Yeah, we pretty much just go here to... Listen Say to the Citadel badmouth us. Yeah. Or like the, the council. Bad Say hi to us. Anderson. That too. Heck, we might not even finish the talking scene by the time the episode ends. <laughs> okay, do you have. I got a question. Do you have the uh, Kasumi DLC? I do not yet. I, I'll get it. Yeah, I'm okay, not really a DLC member. When, I, we, I, when we get to the DLC, the way it introduces Kasumi is you have to go to the Citadel to pick her up. Yeah. And on the loading dock here. They actually, like, they practically, like, teleport in, like, one of those, you know, pillar video advertisements. Oh, and her face you were is talking right, about that. Her face is right there on the advertisement saying, Shepard, come over here and put in the password. And so you do <laughs> that, and then you basically talk about this heist you're going to do in the middle of a crowd on a big <laughs> advertisement, on an advertising board. That's amazing. Like, what? And she's wearing her... You know, conspicuous Jedi outfit. I thought I've heard Kasumi was better than Zaid sometimes. Most most times. She has an interesting. The loyalty mission is interesting. It's like it's really interesting up until the end where you have to shoot your way out. I assume that these are the two we're picking, Garrus and Morden. I approve. Okay. But yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. That's, yeah. That's, I mean, that even tops the Mass Effect One trick of having all your classified meetings in the middle of the open bridge on a loudspeaker with a bunch of aliens on the. Deck, at least that's on the ship. Yeah, at least that is on the ship. You know, this is worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like, I don't, I like Zaid. Okay, I think he's got a fun, a fun mission with a good character arc where he My, learns yeah. to, he learns to work as a team instead of doing his own thing. My favorite thing about that mission is there's actually <laughs> ramifications for going renegade. Right. So and you got, you got that too. I'm sorry, sir. I'm gonna not pay attention. Can I help you, sir? Just talk to this person. Been a couple of years since that said, talk to Garrus. Security seems to have tightened a bit. There was a review of security protocol. A few minor changes were made to reduce the risk of This is funny. It's even funnier when you bring Thane back. Do you think a gap would stand out? Assumptions are dangerous. What does Thane say? He talks about there being like a dozen different security. Right, right. I need to talk to this person, by the way. Because this is hilarious. Oh, that's the, this, is, that, this is awesome. Yeah. So he's explaining uh, how the guns work, basically. The, the, it's the Pharaoh slugs that the Dreadnoughts yeah. use. I think, now I, I'm not sure, but I think those, those two containers on either side 
are Actually, supposed to be the Pharaoh slugs. Or slugs. has they're, something they're, in it. Mm. He, he says they're 20 kilo. Uh, yeah, it's, it's about like a 20 kilogram, I think, which is like, I don't Not know. Not that much. No, it's, it's, like, it, it's, no, it's like 40 pounds. It's 24 pounds. Why are yeah. They leaving military in the middle of a civilian area? It, it, it just, I'm not just sure if they're supposed to be there. A lobby at that? An unsecured lobby? But yeah, it's 1.2 kilograms to 1.2 pounds to a kilogram, so it's 24. Pounds. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of which, there really isn't any point to the TSA checkpoint. The Geth did not try to smuggle a knife into Citadel. No. no. They just full on attacked. Do you think that it's supposed to be a commentary on, um, like, you know, America's crazy, you know, checkpoint system in airports? That's possible, could be actually. That, could be Bioware's writers or just that thick, I really can't tell. This kind of thing might have helped on, um, uh, shoot, what's it called? Ice Planet, Novaria, in Mass Effect 1. Because they essentially did that with the, um, Death. Do you seriously think? Yeah, well, except they didn't yeah. reportedly okay. check the packages, but yeah. the, the whole point of Novaria was so that the clients could do, you know, crazy illegal stuff. Yeah. yeah. If they just said, okay, this is crazy illegal stuff, that the Novaria authorities would have said, okay, fine. Don't, about <laughs> don't tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so long as that it, so long as your crazy illegal stuff didn't interfere with other people's crazy illegal stuff. You were gold, but if you were making problems, then if you don't have the stomach or you're worried about being reported, I... yes, I see the problem already, Commander Shepard. So Bailey's pretty cool. He's the voice actor is supposed to be somebody, right? Yeah. He, um. The last thing I played with him in it was um. He's the general dude in Skyrim. Yeah. But, but I, he's I something else, some, too. I forgot his else. name. Uh, he's on Battlestar Galactica, isn't he? Isn't this okay. that guy? I haven't seen have Battlestar Galactica, so I don't know. I never watched Battlestar, so I don't know. One of their lost vectors is still kicking. I'm not going to say screw the council, despite last game. Because I want to do anything to get out of the clutches of Cerberus despite my complete inability to do so. Yeah, and that's the awesome part. Like, we can totally quit Cerberus and, and join with the council. Like, we're not railroaded in sticking with Cerberus at all. Yep. Uh, that's it. I don't care. I should be going. You need anything else? Let me know. I will ignore you, Avina. I ignored you in Mass Effect 1, and I will continue to do so, because you are annoying. Yeah, come on. Cerberus are jerks? You're renegade? Seems to go together really nicely, don't you think? Yeah, totally. Well, I think you could make a case for like a renegade. Well, you could you know, liking Cerberus. You could you can make a case for like a like a pro-human renegade and then a more open-minded renegade, I guess. Yeah. So, but the but game's not that flexible. Case for a pro-human renegade who has a crew full of aliens and treats them respectfully, but whatever. The game's just not that flexible. You would think that the idea behind renegade would just be. I don't know, pragmatic. But yeah, that's what it should be. But it's not. It it's typically, it's typically, it's typically, it's typically just, it's typically just jackass. Yeah, pretty much. Like when I was first hearing the stuff from Mass Effect One, I'm like, yeah, cool, awesome. This will be nice and not good and evil and all that. No, no. The ambassador knows how to play politics. Just tell him what you need and let him pick Except he occasionally just gets mad and just goes off on the council. You know, I was a little annoyed with how we never actually get to see the human council. Yeah. It just felt it felt a little lazy to me. But you think they were gonna animate two whole councils? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's super easy. They're all humans. Just take like some generic models and yeah. How familiar with Tyler, are you? <laughs> you think with all the you think with all the voice acting in this game, they do a little more. But just that's all they spent the money on in tour. It's just a it's just a few lines of dialogue. It, it's like what is that? Like an extra twenty minutes in the studio? I don't know. I want to point out what I'm actually saying here. He's complaining at me for working with Cerberus, and here's the Alliance abandoned me. What did you expect? You were dead, Shepard. The you were dead. The Alliance didn't abandon you. you. They thought you were dead. Which That's is exactly what Anderson just said. Well, you 
for a debt. <laughs> I know. I know you wouldn't rip the Cerberus without a good. Reason. That's not. That, that's not. Something but that's not the same as abandoning you. I know. What the crap does that have to do with what I just said? Okay, I guess it kind of does. So Anderson, I actually like, and he's actually reasonable. The collectors? A grave threat. Don't buy those fish, then. Even that may not be enough because it comes up its tail. It's so... It, it's, the past two years it's really annoying because you have, um, you know, they, they, the council or whatever pretty much renounces everything that you say for no real reason, and Vigil conveniently dies, you know, is yeah. kind of contrived, and then, um, I don't know, like, if you... Some people actually have managed... They take Legion here to, you know, when you talk to the council... And, of course, it's really ridiculous that you're walking around with a geth anyway and nobody notices. But when they say, oh, Sovereign was just a geth ship, and Legion comes forward and outright says, geth do not have that kind of ship or technology, you know, we do not have any of that. And then the Solarian councilman will say, um, oh, uh, we have no idea what your weird robot servant is talking about. Maybe these, maybe these Geth were simply just more advanced. I mean, oh my it, is, God. it is like such a horrible, contrived mess, and I, I, I'm really surprised that the, uh, I guess that the writers included that, that they allowed you to do that. Um, why didn't they just not have Legion say anything? I got a long list of people I didn't want to see. And your name is right. Kind of silly yeah. that the uh, security checkpoint was mutual. Trying to get the invasion. Yeah. Yeah. When you yeah, if you talk to the secretary with the Geth, she's like, oh, uh, keep your just keep you know your eye on your robot servant dude, and we'll be we'll be cool. Just make sure he doesn't wander off. Do they like, just pretend uh, he's not a Geth? Is that how it works? Nobody it seems like. to notice that he's a Geth, like on the Citadel. Everyone thinks he's like your, I don't know, your random robot servant or something. You have a robot butler. That's Sorry. exactly what it is. Yes, it's robot Jeeves. Space Jeeves. <laughs> Space Jeeves. That would be awesome. Wait, no, that, that's Edie. <laughs> This is after so, suggesting that he helps them, which were both renegade options. And if you want something done on the city, he knows who can make it happen. He's okay, so what kind of... I've never really done this on Renegade, so what kind of... How different is the dialogue between Udina and Anderson? Um, Why would you know when you're talking with the council? Yeah. I would. I don't know. I don't think I've ever picked Udina. <laughs> No, 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 I'm not saying Udina, like, you know, Udina as council member, but, like, as, like, you know, when Udina comes to talk to Anderson. Oh. I don't think it's that different. I don't know. It's just kind of like, oh, we can't, we can't help you because you're with Cerberus. I will ask him where Caden is. You know, I'm just going to note, this is a guy that Captain Anderson slugged in the face last game. Yeah, and he's acting... I have to reiterate, he belongs... On a serving duty in a 20 year old cruiser around Mars. Why yeah. is he here? Why is he still here? He's just acting really subservient and stuff. It's funny. So I'm just going to say what actually happened here. The damage to the Citadel remains the Sovereign. Um, the Geth disappeared, and they took a long time to fix all the wreckage. It's still not actually all fixed two years later. So that's basically what he was going to say. Okay, now what do I do? Um, of course, the whole place still looks pretty much the same as it was. So oh, yeah. Order. Well, there's only the one... Oh, yes, I need to go find the reporter. Where is she? Uh, um, level 28. Okay. You you just did that, didn't you? Yes, I did. Google or memorized? It, you know, it's... Uh, No, I recently did it, that section. Now, what's really weird is they talk about how, oh, the humans can't really help with the... Uh, with the abduction of colonies or whatever, because they took heavy losses, but even if you all, say like, take them back to the fleet, but like when you do the Paragon or whatever, Shepard says the okay the Deturian fleet lost Aww. like twenty ships. Oh, there she is. And uh, the humans only lost eight cruisers, and that was it. And it's like though that's your heavy yeah. losses, just eight cruisers. I, I do want that's the Paragon option though, isn't it? Dang it! It's a really it's a really good um. It's a really good option, but yeah, it's kind of like, I'm sitting there thinking, Oh, so I didn't punch her? Your, Dang it. These are your debilitating, you'll get it in a sec. Uh, these are your debilitating losses. Eight ships. 
but the people remember you, Shepard. You know, I'm really That's astonished me. that, I just want to give your you know, the stupid reporter of all people is taking it completely in stride that you're alive. She's, you know, the only so one who's yeah. done that so far. I don't get it. I love Shepard's expression. He's just staring. He's not, he he has no expression. No, 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 no. like when he kind of like, when he, like when he twitches or when he cocks his eyebrow or whatever. No. When she turns the camera on. Boom! <laughs> I wish I'd done that the first time we met. So I actually like the Paragon option better here. I'll make sure everybody yeah. Alliance sees that. <laughs> That's funnier, but the Paragon option is better. Because the Paragon option is just him um, completely overriding her and saying like, what he wants to say. He talks like what you were talking about, the uh, the eight different losses. He names every single one of those ships and all that. He, name, he names ship like, you know, yeah, the, the Turian ships had 300 crew apiece. The Alliance, you know... Yeah, the alliance ships and just and, and he just de um completely invalu invalidates all of her arguments. Okay. Where it's like, oh, the human cost, and it's like we lost eight ships. They lost twenty. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go back to. We're, I guess that's it for the Citadel because I could find some more side quests, but we'll we'll have main quests here later, so we'll do that later. Oh, there's these galactic news kiosks everywhere, and they're usually talking about stuff you're doing or stuff you did in Mass Effect One. It's just it's a decent touch. And also, e interesting filler. Yeah. Um, there was this one, I I, I seriously thought they were... Codex entries in this game? Yeah, there's codex entries. No, I mean, but do you get them from random terminals in this game? Probably. I don't know. I never I never actually listened to the whole codex in Mass Effect 2. You get a grand total of, like, I don't know, two, three, four codex entries... Uh, entries from examining stuff. You don't get all, most of it. You pretty much get off the spot. I think. Not like Mass Effect oh, One, cool. where you got them off all sorts of things. You you got yeah. four off the Normandy in Mass Effect One. At least, yeah. Like I think Only on the four? inside. At, like on the inside, at least, and then there was like yeah. two or three on the outside of the ship. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna so go check what messages are. The the Citadel in Mass Effect Two just feels so incredibly small. And just, like, you know, it's, all the levels feel it's surprisingly, isolated. It's surprisingly um, closed in. Like, you can't see outside in a lot of it. It just feels like random base place. So many well, like, missions. You, you, do get the, you do get the one window where you can kind of get a sense of scale. Yeah. That the um, first game kind of lacked, but... I mean, the level still didn't look bigger than, ones. say, the gymnasium in school. Certainly not bigger than the gymnasium. Yeah. Unlike the Presidium in the first game. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's that's like, actually a big space. That I could imagine as a mall or whatever. Yeah. But, and there were... Go ahead, sorry. I mean, there's just... I can't think of a place that I would consider big in the real world that is, you know, anywhere near as small as the uh, city levels in Mass Effect 2. Which is and, not I, good. and I've heard people argue that, oh, like, you know, if you, like, measure it out or whatever, the spaces are about the same size or bigger or whatever... But it doesn't feel big. That's the thing. It it, um, because in the Mass Effect, it was like, it it felt like everything flowed together. Like you know, get off the sh you literally you get off the ship, you know, onto the dock, take the elevator to, you know, the port or whatever, and then you can walk through whatever door, like multiple different doors to different locations to the Presidium or to the wards and it just, it like, everything just kind of flowed from, like, one area to the next and yeah. in Mass Effect 2, everything just feels very, disconnected. Like, you know, disconnected, like, disconnected galleries. Another thing well, is... Yeah, I'm thinking more about how the space is set up. Like, go to a mall and, you know, walk around on the second floor. You're not expecting a giant, you know, a big space with a wide hall. You're gonna, it's actually gonna be a fairly small little place for you to walk on. The deal is, it's a long quarter, it goes on forever, and you can follow those quarters all over the mall. Um, and that's kind of like the way it feels like in Mass Effect 1, like, okay, this is a small hallway, but I can keep walking all over a giant, giant space. Whereas in Mass Effect 2, you know, it's just, okay, this is a big gymnasium, there's not really anywhere to go from here. The space ends at these walls, and that's kind of tiny. Yeah, in Mass Effect 1, one of the big things is, um, you see your ship. Everywhere you go, you know where your ship is. But in Mass Effect 2, you just fast travel everywhere. So nothing feels connected. It doesn't feel like you're actually like going from place to place. Well, except you get to putter your ship around on the star map. Yes. Beep, beep. So um, right. I'm going to...
uh, grunt first because it's more interesting than Jack. Vaguely. I like grunt better. Grunt has... No, there's too many blue suns either way. <laughs> I don't know. Grunt's mission is really boring to recruit him. Eclipse? It, there's suns. some there's some crazy person. It's a crazy blue suns lady who's trying to make an army. Okay. Okay. Jack, but um, warlord dude is pretty cool. He's interesting. What he's trying to oh. do and all that. Yeah, the the mad scientist guy. The he's he's interesting, but I'm talking about just kind of the Assume kind the of actual the, fight. The, 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 the junk the junkyard shooting gallery. At least it's not more gray Basically. hallways. It's there's a lot of gray here, dude. Well, it's yeah, more brown than gray. Brown. Yeah, this is a this is a brown space. Don't confuse it's, it with the Citadel. That's one. Oh, look, look look up look up to your left. Um, in the sky, I think that's a large Orion ship. I'm not sure. Wow, that's big. I I just noticed that. Um, on this recent playthrough. That like, is big. A day or two ago. That's actually you know so I don't credit there. That's well, kind of a cool. That's kind of a cool set piece. Yeah, yeah, this does look pretty cool. It's blurry as heck. It doesn't. It's not nearly as clear as Mass Effect Three would be in that kind of picture. Um, and now back to the boring brown junkyard. <laughs> yeah, this feels pretty borderlandish. It does vaguely, doesn't it? Look at Quick combat. Yep, blue sun. Oh, I need to move mine. Now back to sniping. So. Yeah. You think they'd figure it's out like that I'm going to kill them? The back of head. <clears throat> Can't see him. I'm serious. He's way over the cover here. Yeah. Not that it matters since I turn invisible every other minute, like every twenty seconds. Oh, wounded Mark. This is a fun little conversation. So we were not having enough time to talk about stuff while we're on the Citadel, and now we're going to have too much time to talk about stuff. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully it's a little better than last week. Last week was kind of... We had this guy spaces. is funny. Yeah. I love teasing this guy. What is up with this man's teeth? Uh, there's blood in between? Supposedly. It's it's plastic blood, though. It looks like the blood from Dragon Age. Everything looks like he's opening his mouth and just... Yeah. yeah. There's so, like this weird uncanny valley effect with a lot of the teeth in the in the mouths of these characters. Just in games in general, most of the time, teeth are hard. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jacob has it really bad. It looks like he's got like these large plastic things in his mouth that do, it, it looks like they don't really fit, and it looks like he can barely open his mouth when he talks. I mean, Jacob, I think he looks more like someone who I don't know. It kind of reminds me of people who've gotten new braces and they kind of don't want to close their mouth. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Or oh, you mean open? Yeah. Or whatever. Either way. Like, you don't want... Eh, you know, okay, I do not want to drag my lips over these sharp metal things, so yeah. I'm holding my mouth in an awkward position all day. Oh, well, yeah. Wait, wait a second, they'll run blind into Krogan. What just happened there? Was that the Renegade? Yeah. What, what, did, what do you convince him to do? I convinced him to give wrong directions to Jador. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> I, never, I, never, I never picked that before. <laughs> and I actually like that. I forget... What, what the good option was? The the good option is um tell them that the last group was first. Like there's nobody here. Just, oh, okay. It's like oh yeah, just yeah. Mindless. Anyone up there? They know what's going on. So what's going on is that there's um oh uh Jador, who is the person on the loudspeaker, is trying to find Okir because Okir is supposedly working for her, trying to make an army, but he has his own things. And I just didn't give him the the meta gel. That's amazing. You don't give him the meta gel as Paragon either. He never gets it. Can't, I thought Wait, you could what? give it to him. No, like as uh, either it, like either Paragon or Renegade. You he doesn't. You don't. You you never give him meta gel. I mean, like he's he doesn't actually he doesn't actually need it. Like the, the he's not hurt like, that bad. He's not. He's not really. He thinks he's not really bad, and he's not. Oh. And, you know, and, and and Shepard says, well, he doesn't need that. Well, I mean, he does still seem to be in 